In this video, I'd like to compare asthma and COPD. They're two very similar conditions, and often patients complain that they've been given a diagnosis of COPD, but then they go see another physician and they're given a diagnosis of asthma. Why is that? It's because they're very similar conditions. So I'm going to turn your attention to this little image. So this is basically, if you imagine the airways, as they branch out into the lungs. Now, conditions like asthma and COPD, they affect the little airways, the little branches towards the end of the branching uh, airway tree. So what happens in asthma though, is that you have inflammation around here in the little bronchioles, we call them, the little airway tubes. In COPD, you don't get as much inflammation here, you get a different type of inflammation and it's much less than in asthma. So that causes the condition to be slightly different in behavior. However, they are, because they are both conditions affecting the airways, the symptoms can sometimes be similar. So in asthma, you might have shortness of breath, chest constriction, wheeze, coughing, whereas in COPD, you might get the same. However, in asthma, the difference is that these symptoms tend to occur in attacks, or they tend to occur variably. So you may have days when you feel absolutely fine. It feels like you don't have a condition at all. Whereas on certain days, when the asthma flares up, and you have an attack, you might feel really poorly. You might get these symptoms quite a lot. So it's very variable. It can change very quickly. And that is because the inflammation causes a permanent state of irritation in these airways. So they can constrict at any time because of that inflammation. The little nerve endings that control the muscles, that control the caliber of these airways, they can be triggered by this inflammation and by different stimuli from the environment, from allergens that you inhale, stress, etc. So these can cause the asthma to flare up. You can get an attack. And that causes the intermittent symptoms in asthma. In COPD, it's a little bit different because the airways do suffer. They're a little bit narrowed, but it's something that has happen happened over a long period of time. So they will be narrowed, but in a more permanent fashion. So in COPD, you won't get the symptoms as variable as in asthma. They won't change as much from moment to moment. You might have a constant breathlessness. You might have a cough that doesn't go away. You might get a lot of mucus. So it's a little bit different because the inflammation, like I said, is different in asthma and COPD. And in asthma, you have a lot more inflammation than in COPD. Age is also very important. So asthma tends to affect patients who are younger, patients who perhaps haven't necessarily smoked as much, patients who have maybe allergies. Whereas COPD, on the other hand, it affects patients who are generally older. So it takes a long time to develop COPD. It's not something that happens early in life. Generally, you need a lot of years in which you've smoked or you've been exposed to dusts, fumes. It's rare to see COPD in someone younger than 40 years old. Whereas asthma can occur in patients who are younger. It can occur in children. One thing you might find similar between the two conditions is it's the treatment. So these two conditions are both treated with inhalers. This makes matters sometimes complicated because inhalers generally have a good effect on both conditions. So both asthma and COPD will benefit from inhaler treatment. There is a difference because in asthma treatment, our goal is to treat this inflammation. This is the main treatment in asthma. If we combat the inflammation, if we keep it in check, we get fewer and fewer asthma attacks, fewer symptoms. In COPD, Combating the inflammation doesn't do as much, but if we target this area with medication that opens up the airways and keep them open for as long as possible, we breathe better. But most inhalers, they contain both. So most inhalers basically are combination inhalers. So things like this one or this one, they have two medications in them. They have a medication that opens up the airways, a bronchodilator, and the corticosteroid, which is an anti-inflammatory drug. So, of course, if someone suffers with either asthma or COPD, if they receive this medication, because they have that medication that opens up the airways, they will get some benefit. However, if we're looking to optimize treatments with inhalers, in asthma, we will try to target the inflammation more. So we need to make sure that the inhaler that we are getting contains a corticosteroid. Whereas in COPD, the steroid is less required. So it can work in some patients, especially those that have frequent flare-ups, or have a little bit of 
an asthma phenotype, it says, where there's a little bit of an overlap with asthma in the way the disease behaves. But generally, what we try to do in COPD is give an inhaler that has maybe two medications that open up the airways, that work synergistically. So you have two medications that do the same thing, but in different ways. We're using inhalers, but we're either lumping together the treatment, we're treating both asthma and COPD in the same way, or we're splitting it slightly and we're treating the symptoms more in COPD and the inflammation more in asthma. However, we're slowly getting to the stage where we're having triple combination inhalers. And this makes matters a little bit simpler, but also a little bit less nuanced. Because if we're going to have medications that contain two bronchodilators and a corticosteroid all in the same inhaler, basically we're treating everything as if it's the same. So these inhalers already exist, and they have a great effect in COPD, for example, because they treat everything that could be treated for COPD. And I think there's a role for them in, the, in asthma as well. But I hope it's clearer now that distinguishing asthma and COPD is not always as straightforward. And it does require a good clinical history. So as a patient, if you're going to see your doctor, it's important to provide your doctor as, with as much information as you can because it helps clarify the diag diagnosis better. And the good news is that even though Perhaps the diagnosis may change over time as new information appears. The treatment is more or less the same. So your doctor cannot really make a very big mistake by treating you for asthma, for example, when you have COPD. I hope this video was helpful and it clarifies things a bit. If you have further questions, do leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you in future videos.